everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be changing out the gauge cluster bulbs on our 2000 Mercedes ML320. So the first step in doing that is to remove the upper cover for the steering column. Now what you have to do is push in two clips, one on either side, and then kind of reach behind the steering wheel and push this part into uh, in towards where the gauge cluster is. Unfortunately because this is a Mercedes and it's 17 years old at this point, all the plastic is super super brittle. So whenever you pushed in these two clips, at least in our case, they both broke. And whenever we pushed in the other two, where, where the other two clips are, this side cracked. So we're going to have to get a new piece or repair this one. Not sure which one we're going to do yet. But don't be surprised if that happens on your vehicle as well. And plan for that. Now, the next step in order to get the gauge cluster out is to pull out these trim pieces. There's one on each side and they're connected in the middle, but they separate as two halves. So what I found the best way to do it is, is to take a trim removal tool, kind of wedge it in there. And there's a few clips behind each one of these pieces. And these actually seem to come out fairly easily. So you're gonna do that on both sides in order to get both sides out because again, they're interlocked together. And then you're gonna have to kind of just wiggle them out. This side has a switch connected to it. So I'll pull that side out off of camera but this side just comes out like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this other side out and then uh, I'll show you how to take the gauge cluster bezel off. Before I take the gauge cluster bezel out, I just wanted to show you uh, the easiest way that I found to take the switch out. There's a connector plug on the back and it's a typical Mercedes uh, four pin connector. But the easier way instead of unplugging that, I found is to just pull the entire switch out of this trim uh, piece. And in order to do that, all you need to do is slip a plastic pry tool in each side right here where the switch actually clips into this trim piece and pry inwards towards the switch on each side while you're pushing it either from the front or pulling it from the back, either way works. And if you do that, this will come out super easily. So now I'm gonna show you how to take off that gauge cluster bezel. Now that we're ready to get the gauge cluster bezel out, uh, unfortunately, it's made out of cheap plastic as is uh, usual with these Mercedes. So on the right-hand side of this bezel right here, the clip's broken off. So on the left-hand side, what I found is the easiest way to take it out, instead of trying to pull it with your finger or push it from the back side, which won't work unless you have very small fingers either way, I just took a small plastic hook, reached it around, and just pulled it just a little bit uh, right here at the bottom of it and was able to unlatch it. So now that it's unlatched, all you need to do is grab it on both sides, pull it down, and it's clipped in pretty well up here on the upper right hand side. So I got that unclipped now, and all you have to do is take it out. So, now that it's out, there's two seven millimeter bolts, one on each side on the left and right of the gauge cluster, and there's two plastic screws that are, take a flathead screwdriver that screw into an expansion push pin type of clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a seven millimeter for these and the flathead for these, and I'm gonna take them out and I'll show you how to pull the cluster out at that point. Now we have these screws out, and this is what one of the seven millimeter ones looks like. Pretty simple. And this is what one of those clips looks like. So you can see it has a little flathead plastic screw that goes into a plastic expansion style clip. So now that those are out, we can take this gauge cluster out by just kind of getting your fingers back there and pulling it out. Pretty simple. Might have to push down the emergency flasher button to get it out. Oh, maybe not. Okay, we'll have to come out sideways here. But in order to do that, we're going to have to disconnect it. So I'll figure out how to disconnect it off of camera and I'll show you how I figured that out afterwards after I get the gauge cluster out and I can show you the actual connector. And we'll be back with the gauge cluster out of the car. This is the connector that plugs into the back of the gauge cluster. And this is the state that it's in whenever it's actually plugged into the cluster. So it normally plugs in in the upper right hand corner if you're looking at the gauge cluster from the driver's seat, it plugs in up here. And in order to get it out, all you're going to need to do is push it, push this little tab down right here and pull this gray lever like that. And it's going to push the connector out and you'll just be able to pull it out really easily. This is a similar type of connector to what you see on a lot of ECUs, uh, but you see a weatherproof version of this on ECUs, of course, if they're in the engine bay of a car. So once you disconnect it, all you have to do is slide the gauge cluster out, uh, push the wiper stock all the way down and slide it out over the wiper stock uh, to the right side of the gauge cluster toward the center console. 
So I have it out, obviously. It's not in the car anymore. And I have it on the bench. So I'll take you guys over to the bench and I'll show you how to change your bulbs out. Now we're looking at the back of the gauge cluster. And as you can see, we have a couple bulbs removed right here and right here. Um, this is the bulb right here, that blue. You can either take a look and just see that the filament is half of it's missing, or you can do a continuity test using a multimeter. It's pretty easy to do that as well if you can't see the filament. Um, so what you're gonna do is, if you have one bulb blown out like this one, the other one's probably gonna be its, on its way out. So you at least wanna replace two of them, or such as in pairs. Um, otherwise, I recommend just replacing all of them at once. If one of them's out, probably the rest of them are at some stage of either being about to go out or going out within the next little while. So you probably just wanna replace them all so you don't have to do this job over again. So we're just gonna replace all of our bulbs in our case, and we're gonna go ahead and go put the uh, cluster back in the car and show you what uh, it looks like once we put it back in. So now at this point, I have the gauge cluster back in the vehicle. I don't have any of the trim around, as you can see, because about half of the trim that got removed uh, needs gluing to repair it. So that, that's being epoxied at the moment. Um, but as you can see, I'll turn on the lights here, the headlights, and everything like, lights up as it should. Uh, the issue that we were having before was that between about 0 and 40 to 45 miles an hour, the bulb that lights up over there was out. So you couldn't really see how fast you were going at night if you were going anything under freeway speeds, which is not a very, very good thing to have. Um, we also changed out the turn signal bulbs, which I'll turn on the emergency flashers. You can see those work perfectly. And we also changed out the bulbs that go behind where the temperature, the odometer, and the clock are. So with that, uh, reassembly is the same as disassembly, just in the reverse order. And at this point, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.